Peter Fariana and others versus Bajan Lala and others. Uh, the, ju the judgment was given on uh, 21st November 1990. Uh, the bench consisted of Honorable Justice K. J. Chandra Reddy and Honorable Justice S. R. Pandian. Moving on to the facts of the case, Bajan Lal at the time of the case was the Union Minister of Environment and Forest and Devi Lal was elected as Chief Minister of Haryana. In the same election, the respondent too, who is uh, Dharam Pal, lost the election against Bajan Lal's wife and owing to various political rivalries and institutions of various criminal cases, there was a lot of bad blood between Bajan Lal and Devi Lal. Consequently, the respondent too placed a complaint before the CM against Bajan Lal where he alleged that Bajan Lal possessed disproportionate property or pecuniary resources compared to his indefinite sources of income. It was also alleged that the accumulation of such property was far beyond his legal means. So, the special officer in uh, CM Secretariat passed the message to Director General of Police and it was uh, then passed to Superintendent of Police asking him to take necessary measures. And the superintendent of police asked station head officer to register the case and start investigation. And the case was registered under the section 161, 165 of IPC and section 5 clause 2 of Prevention of Corruption Act. And the copy of uh, FIR was given to the magistrate and the investigation has begun. So uh, this Bajan Lal through writs of certiorari and prohibition under Article 226 pleaded before the High Court uh, and he argued that uh, the offences doesn't uh, come into a cognizable offence uh, and there is no uh, competent authority for the station head officer to investigate that case. So the High Court ruled in favour of the Bajan Lal as it was uh, and, uh, and held that it didn't make for a cognizable offence and quashed the registered FAR along with charging a heavy fine for the respondent to for the recovery of cost of writ petition for Bajan Lal. So this aggrieved party moved to Supreme Court against the judgment of High Court for quashing the FAR. So the uh, provisions related or dealt in, in this case is Article 226 of Constitution of India and section uh, from 155 to 157 and 159 and 482 of CRPC and section 5 of Prevention of Corruption Act and section 162 and 165 of Indian Penal Code. Moving on to section 482 of CRPC which is the inherent power of the High Court. The section 482 is read as saving of inherent powers of High Court Nothing in this code shall be deemed to limit or affect the inherent powers of the High Court to make such orders as may be necessary to give effect to any order under this code or to prevent abuse of the process of any court or otherwise to secure the ends of justice. We have to keep in mind three points that is uh, this power is wide and has no statutory limitation and uh, it it is the power it, uh, the High Court has the power to ensure, uh, to prevent an abuse of the court and to secure the ends of justice. And therefore, the High Court must have due regard to the nature and gravity of the offences. Moving on to the Article 226, that is... Uh, uh, every high court shall have a power to issue orders or writs including habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, co warranto and certiorari to any person or any government for the enforcement of fundamental rights and for other purpose. The word other purpose in the above context means the jurisdiction confers on the high court is not only limited to protect fundamental rights but also any other legal rights. That is under Article 226, the High Court is empowered to issue not only writs but directions and orders as well as for the enforcement of right conferred by Part 3 that is fundamental rights for and for any other purpose. The main objective of this Article 226 is to 
provide an inexpressive quick remedy to the aggrieved person. Moving on to the next provision, that is section 155 and 156 of the CRPC. It simply means, uh, the section 155 simply means that uh, it's regarding non-cognizable cases and investigation of non-cognizable cases. If a police officer, uh, uh, if the police officer registered a non-cognizable non cases and he shall not be uh, investigate that case without the order of the magistrate. And in section 156, which is regarding cognizable cases and investigation of cognizable cases, uh, in cognizable cases, a police officer can investigate without the order of magistrate and within and can that investigation should be done with the local limits of the station moving on to section 162 and 165 uh, the section 162 is regard with the public servant uh, who is taking gratification other than legal remuneration uh, it shall be held liable under this section and section 165 is when a public servant obtaining any valuable things without any consideration from any person uh, for any proceedings or any business shall also be liable under this section. Now moving on to section 5 of the Prevention of Corruption Act. This section 5, uh, there are uh, many clauses to this section, but I'll be dealing with uh, the, sub, uh, the clause E, that is if any person on his behalf in possession or has any time during the period of his office been in possession for which the public servant cannot satisfactorily account or of pecuniary resources or property disproportionate to his own resources of income. That is, if he has more wealth, if the sources of income is taken into account and has misused his position uh, in acquiring such wealth, this section can be applied. And Section 5A states the investigation into cases under this Act. That is, certain police officer has been uh, given authority to investigate uh, the, the cases coming under this Act. That is, uh, if uh, regarding Delhi Police Authority, Delhi Police Act, then the Inspector of Police is the authorized person to investigate. And in presidency towns like Calcutta, Madras, Assistant Commissioner of Police is the other authorized person. And in Bombay, it is Superintendent of Police. And elsewhere, the, the Deputy Superintendent of Police shall investigate the offences under this Act and the offences mentioned in the IPC uh, of Section 161 and 165 and 165A. So the issues have raised regarding this case is where the first issue where the, where the allegation against the Bajanlal constitute a cognizable offence. The second issue was uh, whether SHO, that is the station head officer, has a, uh, whether has a competent authority to investigate this case under Section 5 of the Prevention of Corruption Act. And uh, the third issue was whether the High Court decision to quash the FIR was justifiable and within the scope of Article 226. Regarding the issue one, that is uh, whether this case consists of a cognizable offence, uh, the court held that uh, uh, the exercise of this uh, extraordinary inherent power, power power by the High Court was not justified and there was a definite constitution of a cognizable offence, uh, thereby justifying the registration of a case. That is, the court held that uh, there are uh, the decision by the High Court is unjustified and there are cognizable offence regarding this case. And the court also held that the state, the stage at which the case was on, it was too soon to decide the relevance and reliability of the facts alleged and no negative inference can be drawn before any inf investigation and in inquiry is carried out. Therefore it, it, therefore, it cannot be expected out of police official to necessarily reply the question without any investigation has been started. Moving on to the issue two, whether the uh, SHO has the competent authority to 
investigate this case under section 5 of the prevention of corruption act so the court held that when uh, when this uh, type of cases uh, are given to a lower lower rank officers the superintendent of police or any higher ranked police officer should clearly state reasons for granting such permissions to the lower ranked police officer uh, this requirement is uh, essential because the legislature intention enacting 5a is to ensure that investigations of offenses punishable under the sections 161 165 165a of the ipc and section 5 of the prevention of corruption act are primarily conducted by the officers designated in clauses section a to d of the 5a1 which i have discussed earlier that uh, in delhi the in investigate uh, sorry the inspector of police will be uh, investigating and in president uh, presidency towns calcutta and madras the assistant commissioner of police will be investigating and in bombay superintendent of police and in other places deputy superintendent of police shall be investigating so the court held that the entire entire investigation conducted this far is nullified due to the lack of legal valid authority vested in the station head officer and proceed with the investigation as stipulated under 5 section 5a clause 1 of the prevention of corruption act regarding the section uh, issue 3 uh, it has been already stated uh, in the issue 1 i think the court uh, supreme court held that uh, the quashing of an fir was unjustifiable and gave seven principles to the uh, guidelines that has to be followed by the high courts in exercise of the section 482 of the crpc that is inherent power to quash a criminal proceeding so the first principle is that where the allegations made in the first information report or the complaint even if they are taken at their face value and accepted in the entirely do not prima facie constitute any offense or make out a case against the accused then the fir can be quashed that is if there is no sufficient fact or presumption can be raised against the accused regarding the complaint or the fir then the case can be uh, then the fir can be quashed the second principle is that where the allegation in the first information report and other materials if any accompanying the fir do not disclose a cognizable offense justifying an investigation by the police officer under section 156 close 1 of the code except under an order of the magistrate under 155 uh, close 2 of the section of the code that is uh, i have already discussed this section uh, 156 close 1 where uh, it's, it is regarding cognizable cases investigation of cognizable cases that is sorry it is regard yes it's regarding investigation of cognizable cases uh, where any police officer in charge can investigate the case without the order of the magistrate so if here uh, it's if the case does not disclose a cognizable offense and the police officer justify the investigation under 156 clause 1 uh, where a uh, magistrate order has not been obtained then uh, fir can be quashed the third principle is that whether allegation made in the FIR or complaint and the evidence collected in support of the same do not disclose the commission of any offense and make out a case against the accused. That is, after collecting entire material against the accused by the police officer, and if the Honorable Court uh, come into the conclusion that the allegation in the FIR and the material collected by them uh, putting to the, uh, putting together uh, do not disclose the commission of the offense by the accused then the fir or the criminal proceedings can be quashed the fourth principle is that where the allegation in the fir do not constitute a cognizable offense but constitute only a non cognizable offense no investigation is permitted by the police officer without the order of magistrate as given in the section 155 clause 2 of the code uh, I hope it's clear that is uh, whether when the, when it is a non-cognizable offense and no investigation is permitted by the police officer without the author of magistrate and if this principle is misused then uh, FIR can be quashed. 
the fifth principle is that whether the allegation made in the FAR or the complaint are so absurd and inherently improbable on the basis of which no prudent person can ever reach just conclusion that there is a sufficient ground for proceeding against the accused. That is if the complaint or the FAR is so unreasonable and illogical and uh, the allegation is vague. So uh, if the allegation is vague and uh, it's so illogical, then uh, the FAR can be dismissed. The sixth principle is that where there is an express legal bar engrafted in any of the provision of the court or the concerned act to the institution and continuous of the proceedings or where there is a specific provision in the code or the concerned act providing efficacy uh, redress for the grievance of the aggrieved party. There is a uh, express uh, legal bar is something uh, I have uh, understood is uh, uh, something that cannot be proceeded against. That is, uh, for example, for a governor, pres uh, president, uh, any judicial officer, any quasi judicial officers, uh, if any FAR or complaint has been raised, uh, uh, raised, then an efficient remedy will be given to the aggrieved party. Uh, the seventh principle is that where a criminal proceeding is manifestly attended with a malified or where the proceeding is maliciously instituted with an ulterior motive of wrecking vengeance on the accused and with a view of view to spite him due to the private and personal grudge then the FAR can be quashed that is uh, if the FAR or a complaint has been instituted uh, uh, with the malicious intention or malicious proceeding um, or a, a bad motive or a vengeance against the accused, then FAR can be quashed or the criminal proceedings can be quashed.